Welcome back. It's time for another rave review. Now, it is October, and there's something about this time of year that really makes you want to find like a really good suspenseful, somewhat scary, intense, a little mysterious, that kind of TV show just to binge during this month. Well, I stumbled upon a show on Netflix that fills all of those categories, and I can't stop watching it. It's an Australian TV show called Glitch. <laughs> Doesn't it just make you give you chill bumps right now. Season three just dropped on Netflix, but I had to start at the very beginning. So take a look at the season one trailer. Hi, Andy. Yeah. Amazing. About the cemetery? We just had a call about something disturbing. Say. The people at the cemetery. They've come back to life. Where am I? Hello, Sarah. We never forgot you for a minute, but we've found something, and it's real. I know that you never really got over losing Kate, but I'm not going to share you. Has she told you why? Stop. Stop! All of us need to put things right. Our past? Let those we left behind know the truth. This show is crazy, y'all. Okay, let me just go through the premise of the show really fast. It's set in a fictional town called Uran Urana. I can't say it in an Australian accent. Victoria, Australia. Urana, Victoria, Australia. That's my impersonation of an Australian accent. Anyway, so it starts off this night. A boy is riding his bicycle home. Now, I guess his home is on the way past the cemetery. And he notices that some people covered in dirt are in the the cemetery, naked, and asking for help. And they're confused, and it's weird. And as it progresses, you're seeing people literally, like, you know that big scene in the famous movie, the hand that comes out of the dirt, and it's like, ah. These people are coming out of the graves, literally crawling out, with basically no memory of what's happened or where they are, or what's going on. So they call the police, the policeman comes, they're rounding up people, and it turns out, by the end of the first episode, you'll realize there are seven people from different generations who have basically become alive again. They were buried. Can I just make one quick point to you about being in the grave? I didn't understand why these people were crawling out of the grave naked. Weren't they buried in clothes? Like, seriously, I don't know anybody who's buried naked. So I was talking about this earlier with our director, Natalie, about how fast do clothes decompose. So I did the research, and online it said if you were buried just in the ground with no coffin, eight to 12 years, okay? But in a coffin, much longer. I think it was like 30 to 45 years. So some of these people in the show technically had been dead for only two years, but yet they're popping out of the grave naked. I don't understand that continuity because they were covered in dirt. You don't see anything, but I'm just saying it was very odd to me because I'm like, you're just crawling out of the ground, but naked. I don't understand why. So the characters come from all different kinds of uh, generations. Like some people died in 1939, some people died in the 1800s. One woman, you'll learn, had just died two years prior. So here's what I'm hoping happens. I want there to be a link between all of these characters. I want to know why these seven of this cemetery were brought back to life. Um, I don't want to spoil too much because I'm halfway through it. Like, I couldn't stop watching it. But here's what I will tell you. Uh, the people who've come back to life can't leave the town. I'm trying to intrigue you to watch it, basically not spoil anything, but I'll just tell you this. The people who come back cannot leave the town. For example, some of the people who come back try to leave, and there's some really good special effects on this Australian TV show. So, let's take, we got the woman who died two years prior. We have the original mayor of the town who died, I believe, in like the 1800s. We have a soldier. We have a woman who died in 1939 with her daughter. 
it's very strange to see these what seems to be random people in the cemetery coming back to life. Now, the main storyline revolves around the police officer who discovers all of the people in the grave he's called to site first. It turns out he has a very special connection to one of the persons who has been brought back to life and the drama that then ensues around him having moved on with his life because guess what? He thought his wife died two years ago and death is final. This show is really good, shot really well, and it only has three seasons, okay? So what I'm hoping is there is an end game. Like everything is tied up in a bow because in Australia, they, they kind of do the smaller seasons like they do in England. So the first episode, the first season is six episodes, second is six, and the third is six episodes. It's an easy binge. So what I'm hoping is there's a character arc and a story arc that follows to the end so we A, know why they came back, what's going to happen to them next, can you die twice? There's so many unanswered questions about this particular show that we need to get to in the finale. Now the reason I stumbled upon it is because I get updated on new shows that have been uh, on Netflix. So I see this one called Glitch and I'm like, what is Glitch? So the first two seasons have been on there for a while, but I don't subscribe to the science fiction genre part of Netflix, so I had never seen it. But I'm intrigued by the, you know, the science fiction aspect of coming back from the dead because I think a lot of us can identify with wishing we had one more day with that special person who maybe has passed from our lives. Like, what I wouldn't give to spend one more day with my grandma. You know, I think that's the hope. It's like, oh, what if that could really happen, and what would you do if you had that one more day with that person. Now, there have been other shows very, very similar. I was discussing the show with our producer, Jake, this morning, who goes, I know that plot. I know that storyline. This has been done. It actually has been done. There are similar shows in the UK and France. It was actually started as a French show called The Returned, which I also watched. Um, it's very good. Uh, it's a little bit more subtle. I think they're subtle in France. And then after it was so successful in the UK and France, America got one a few years ago. You might remember the one, the American version was called Resurrection. It lasted two seasons. I watched the first season, and I don't remember why I didn't watch the second season, but I kind of fell off. I felt like it was stretching too much. Uh, it had more of a military vibe, the American version. This one is very small town, cops, uh, character driven uh, with relationships versus we got to find out why these people are back, call the military, and they're sequestered in this little house. Anyway, I highly recommend it. If you're looking for an easy show to binge that kind of has that October feel, I strongly recommend Glitch on Netflix. All three seasons right now available to stream on Netflix. And by the way, when I get done with the show, I'll come back and give you my little recap on if it was worth it or not. But it's just fun to curl up in the blanket with your puppies and watch this kind of scary show with the lights on, by the way and a little popcorn. So that's on Netflix. I want to move on to another fun show because you know how I love some music. And I love a show that involves singing. So there's a new show on NBC called Perfect Harmony. And does this cast have perfect harmony together? Hmm. Take a look. If there is a reason for me to keep on living, send me a sign. Yep. No, no, no. This will not be the last thing that I hear on Earth. That was quite a bender you were on, Art. It's Arthur, how do you know my name? Arthur Cochran, chair of Princeton's music department. I am retired. Oh, yeah. We're getting ready for a choir competition. We need your help. Amazing. This is as loud as you get. Stand up straight. I need to hear you. I came in like a Close your eyes. Fire in the belly. You bring this to choir practice. We have a shot at winning. Rising up, back on the street. You slouch. It's caused by fear of confrontation, which is why you stayed married to a man who crossed the line. Maybe he lost all your money or let a snake loose in the house. Did you read my diary? I wrote it. Life is short. Let's use this precious time to make some beautiful music. Does that not make you want to get up and dance? 
This show is so much fun. It stars Bradley Whitford and Anna Camp. Now, the premise, you know, is the, the, the teacher who's going to commit suicide. What's he going to do? He stumbles across this church that needs uh, a choir director. Now, it's a lot like um, Sister Act meets, meets Pitch Perfect. You're taking a choir that needs help and making them amazing. The good part about this is uh, they don't get too amazing. It's still like a local type uh, choir. So it's not going to be like Sister Act where they're amazing or Pitch Perfect. It's just a fun show with really good music. And it's, it's lighthearted and it's kind of like, you know, let's just escape a little bit, get some fun tunes. I'm hoping they release a soundtrack as well. Perfect Harmony is on NBC's. You can check that out. Uh, there's been two episodes that have aired so far. Now, I wanted to get to quickly one of my favorite Housewives franchises is coming back November 3rd. They have released their cast lineup. I just want you to know everybody's back. Portia, Candy, Nene, Eva, Cynthia, and guess who's back this season after a season off? It's Kenya Moore. Kenya Moore is back on Real Housewives of Atlanta, which is surprising because last time we saw her and Nene... It was big high-stakes drama. Those girls do not get along. You can tune in to that, again, on November 3rd, Sundays on Bravo. Please don't go anywhere. Our morning sports report will be right up right after this. Mm. I love me some Nini, though. She's drama. <laughs>